This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, 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 Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And man, I'll, I'll tell you what, all of our programs are great, but this one's an extra special show. And as I often say, the definition of intelligence is if you agree with me, you're intelligent. And if you disagree with me, you're an idiot. But today we have a very intelligent person on our show. His name is Jeff Booth. And I was just laughing, telling him that, you know, I live on YouTube 24 seven. You can ask him. I'm on it constantly. Because I'm always screening stuff. I want to find out who's talking about what and all this. And then a few days ago, I came across you on Mark Moss's program, I think, uh, Disruptor or something like this. And I said, well, who is this guy, Jeff Booth? And when you started to talk, I went, oh my God, where have you been all my life? <laughs> and then, so I called Sarah, our producer. She says, well, we already booked him. And so within a day, not only I just first time hear about you, but we're now going to interview. Anyway, that's how powerful this program is. Any comments, Kim? Well, Jeff, I'm really glad to meet you. And you are the author of a book that just came out in January, The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future. And I know you and Robert are just going to get along like a house on fire. So I'll, I'm just going to kind of sit back and watch and I'll chime in if I have to. But uh, I think you guys are going to have an amazing conversation. Yeah, And your answers are clear and succinct and non-biased, which is what I like. It's pretty just factual. And, and, and um, welcome to the show, Jeff. want to welcome you to the show. And, and you were in, you've, been in the, you've been in the tech world for years. 20 years. 20, okay. Over 20 years, yeah. And so you've been through the, the highs and the lows and the 2008s and all of that. And 2000 and uh, yeah. So building a company through that, building multiple companies. Excellent. Uh, in technology. So the reason I want to mark on this program is because like I said, he is an intelligent person. I was coincidentally working on my latest book called The Infinite Return. And what, what Jeff says tracks exactly with what I'm saying. So before we get into my book, would you please give the audience a, a bit of your background so we can then take off on our content here. So my personal background is just, I'm a tech entrepreneur. Uh, and, and so I've built a number of businesses in, in tech. One of those businesses was over a, a half billion dollars of market cap. Um, and, I, and today I spend my time kind of working with people I love on, on, on problem or on, on technology companies that, that, positively impact a whole bunch of people. So, so I, I'm chairman of something, I think about eight boards. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I spend my time working on re things that really interest me with people I love that can have a positive impact on the world. That's where um, the book itself that I wrote was because the intersection of what I do every day and what I'm seeing as far as how fast technology is moving um, didn't match with what was going to happen with the way we built our financial system. And what I looked at when I looked out at those two things, that intersection happening, I realized my kids won't grow up in the same world that I'm growing up in. So I didn't write the book to, to I, I'm a reluctant author. I was frustrated. <laughs> and that's why I write wrote, wrote, wrote the book. Well, that's why your title is fantastic. You know, the price of tomorrow, I didn't read the book. Like I just heard about you a couple of days ago. I listened to you again on Mark Moss and you'll commend him on this interview with you because it was, I listened to a couple of other interviews with you, but Mark did the most justice for what you had to say. And people now peg you as a deflationary guy. <laughs> I, I, know. I, I, I think you just missed the whole boat. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so what I, what I, let me interpret what I think happens. Okay. Is what you're saying is the idea of job security due to AI, artificial intelligence is, is finished. It's gone. You know, I mean, we're not, there's more and more unemployment that's going to come up because of AI, artificial intelligence. And so our government, rather than fixing the problem, just keeps adding more stimulus, more, you know, UBI, universal basic income, modern, modern monetary theory. Meanwhile, the guys who run the Fed and the Treasury are getting rich as hell. So we have this gap expanding at exponential speed right now between rich and then the poor and middle class. And so I, I think what your summary is, is we're cruising for revolution or something, you know, it's, it's, it's not gonna get better because they can't fix the problem. 
Yeah. So, so there's nothing that, you know, what happens in a phase transition, right? So water, water looks the same, 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 and then it turns to ice and it looks totally different. It's a phase transition and, and it acts to completely different. If you're measuring water and then it turns to ice, you have a different measuring stick. Today, you have technology driving efficiency at a rate that is staggering. Um, and people don't realize it and it's not measured in our economy. So, so that, that efficiency makes prices fall. Right? That, those prices falling is deflationary. And, and it's not just deflationary, it's deflationary on an axis that is unbelievable. Most of the deflation is in front of us, not behind us. And so, so if you pull that together and you say, if that's true, then we should see evidence, right? And the evidence, and, and the evidence is all around us. The evidence is if that if that's true. So in the last today before COVID, there's 250 trillion dollars of world debt to back an a, a 80 trillion dollar global economy. 185 trillion of that new debt has come in the last 20 years. Predictably, as technology has has driven down prices, there's this monetary stimulus trying to keep prices going up, and so people aren't feeling the prices coming down. In their world, prices are going up everywhere. And it's only because we're manipulating markets to make them go up. Very simply, what you're saying is the Fed, the government, and all this, they're just trying to keep this bubble afloat. Yeah, and you and can't solve the debt problem with more debt. And it's, and it's operating against the principles of technology. And, and, and you also- right, but that's, is that, that's what you're saying, right? They're going against technology. It, these two massive forces are in our lives. And there's nothing that the governments can do. They're trapped now. There's nothing that they can do to stop what will naturally happen. There's and, and what you're saying, too, is that the policies that they're using and all of the manipulation they're doing is based on old, an old economy, the way the economy used to operate, which is not the way it's operating today. Is that right? Exactly. And, it, and one thing I would say, and, 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 and I know a whole bunch of people say those rich people and everything else, but here's what's ha happening. You cannot understand an entire system by looking at its independent parts. And, and what people are doing is they're looking at a system problem that is jumped up against technology and, and looking at the individual parts. Like, so I'll give you an example. People think housing always goes up. And without asking, would housing go up without $185 trillion of stimulus in the last uh, 20 years? And so, <clears throat> so people are looking at their individual parts and then, and then looking for solutions out of those individual parts without measuring the entire system. And that includes the Fed and that includes governments all around the world because they're trapped. And, and I wish they weren't trapped. It's gonna provide a break to society. I wish that wasn't true, but they're trapped. So, so Jeff, I mean, the way, way I explain it is this, is that you have industrial age and you have information age, or actually you're in cyber age right now. I mean, cyber age is so far beyond information age. And basically people are stuck in the, in the industrial age. And, and, they're, and they're using toolbox, they're, they're tools from a toolbox that meant for, for that time. Right, so if I can give people an example, because you know, one of the classic ones everybody talks about is Kodak. Kodak invented the digital camera, the digital process, but they were afraid it was going to destroy Kodak, which it ultimately did anyway. But they wouldn't adopt, Kodak would not adopt to digital. And it's the same as email destroyed the post office department. So basically, that's what's going on in the world today. So when I was listening to Jeff on Mark Moss's program, I'm going, God, this guy's got it. We're fighting two different ages, industrial age, it's not even information age more, it's digital age. Yeah, and, 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 and what, I, when it, what ends up happening in that is, because it's moving so fast, it's easy to, to miss. I'm an entrepreneur, uh, Robert, I know that you follow this, and I know you understand how capitalism works through creative destruction and how an entre the entrepreneurial process works. Why didn't Kodak see that? It's not because they have a whole bunch of dummies. It's because, it's because they don't understand that technology is moving so fast that it, that changes the business entirely. By the way, think about photos today. Photos today are abundant and they're free. And there's a whole bunch of other companies that have created value out of photos. The value comes differently though. 
right? The value doesn't come from producing or protecting your film sales. And the same thing happened in, in Blockbuster. So Blockbuster, um, by the time there are 9,000 stores, by the time uh, download speeds went faster, the only thing they did in response was add candy aisles to the stores, right? And, and we, la we laugh and then we, ha, 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 those people are they're so stupid, right? How, how, dare, how dare they miss how fast technology was moving and download speeds? Netflix was obvious, but it wasn't obvious. And here's the point. That's the same thing that the, the Fed is missing, and that's the same thing all governments are missing. Yeah, so, so Jeff, that's what, that's what you mean by the phase transition. If, if you're sitting in water, you just can't see the ice molecule forming around you right now. And when it changes, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to just hit you. Exactly. And so, so you, but the problem is by, by, by trying to manipulate your market, by manipulating, you actually drive it off a cliff faster. So, so, so what's happening today? And, and, and because this system has all of us in it, right? Um, we're, we're banding together and, and what, what's happening is the divide of politics, the divide of everything is you can, you, you're listening to screaming in a vortex and everyone's talking about the wrong thing. They're missing it completely. Um, and, and, but they're so sure of their point on an old system that they can't even listen to it. It's none of it. It's none of it. <laughs> So what Jeff, so I'm going to say that again, what Jeff is talking about here is our schools, our banking systems, the Fed, uh, all those guys are stuck in the industrial age. And that's why the change in 1971, when the dollar became debt, the only way they could prevent the whole industrial age from collapsing was print more and more and more and more and more money. And now we're going hyper on printing money and that's where UBI, Universal Basic in Income, and MMT, Ocasio-Cortez, and all these guys are saying, we're going to save you. We're going to give you free money. And what you say is that's going to be your death. It's, it, it will be. But I understand why they're doing it, right? I understand. It's not bad people. It's, it's people caught in a system that they don't understand looking at from their point of view. There's, there's, there's still the water, and they haven't seen the ice. And, and they can't see it, and they can't no. see. And, and but but if, if you just follow this this path, what does technology do? Why does a CEO use technology? Why do you use technology? It's to free your time, right? So if yeah, you yeah. can I add one more thing, you you said it so brilliantly. What does deflation mean? It means your money buys more. Exactly. What, so it's like, really good. So we celebrate deflation. In fact, look at your iPhone. Everything on your iPhone is free, right? It's your, my, my, I don't pay for my flashlight anymore. I don't pay for my camera anymore. I don't pay for my guitar tuner, every, my AI assistant. Everything on it is free. How we, how we personally, all of us, create these monopolies and companies and how the monopolies create mono, monopolies is they understand that essentially if you grab the data, the, 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 the digital signal, it becomes free over time and you can charge a little bit of money to everybody and make boatloads of money on a network effect. But, and we celebrate that price coming down over and over and over again. Yeah. I, I, I want you to know what, he's, what Jeff is saying is so powerful because everybody's hopping on gold and silver and Bitcoin and real estate and stocks and all this, but that's part of a death of an old system. And, and, and probably Bitcoin isn't, a, so all of these are, are, are money try, trying to get out of, of an old system. Some of that money is trapped in the old system too. Correct. And, you, and you'd have to be very careful of where that money is trapped because it will be taken away from you. And, because, and the reason gold, silver, real estate, even Bitcoin's going up is because people are panicking right now. They're looking for a, a protection of value. Correct. Correct. Yes. And that's, that's why I was listening to you and Mark Moss's show. I was going, this guy's got it. Got it. Yeah. I appreciate and I, and I, would do, I will want to ask you about where money is trapped because a lot of people are sitting on money. Cash. And well, I would want to know specifically Cash. what Jeff is saying. <laughs> <laughs> Cash is one. Okay, I got Cash is one. You, you know we're married, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just think about, so there's two, there's two choices right now to, so if governments do what creative destruction calls for, right, and stop manipulating, that means we are going to have a deflationary depression and, the, and all the debt will be reset 
And that means if they did that, cash would go up in value, right? Because deflation would make the cash uh, more. But what that would mean is asset prices would fall to 85 to 90% everywhere across the board. And, and, and banks would fail and governments would fail because the banks would fail and the whole system would fail. Hey, once again, so, Jeff, Jeff, we're going to take a break, but hold all that thought. Like I said, you know, the definition of intelligent is Jeff's very intelligent. So we're coming back more about this, this the battle, the battle between the industrial age and really the crypto age. That's where we are right now. And what, what Jeff is saying is crypto is going to win. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is a very important program because like we have a very intelligent guest on the program is Jeff Booth. And I always said, if you agree with me, he's intelligent. He disagrees with me. He's not intelligent, but he's very intelligent. Anyway, this is the Rich Dad Radio Program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube. And then please leave a comment whenever you listen. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them because all we do is we're an education company. We don't sell stocks, bonds, mutual fund, real estate, or gold and silver. We don't sell anything. But we want you to learn. So the reason we archive our programs at Rich Dad Radio Program if you listen to this program, especially this program a second time, you'll pick up twice as much quantum jump. But more importantly, this program needs to be shared with you know your, your family, your spouses, and your business partners and discuss it. And then if you listen to it again and discuss it, you'll be a genius. So our <laughs> guest today is Jeff Booth. He's a technology entrepreneur over the last 20 years. And he is writing about, he's talking about it's actually the clash of ages, the industrial age. And we've gone past the information age, and now we're in the crypto age and the disruption that's going to cause. Any comments? Yes. Yeah. Well, also, um, Jeff is the author of the book, The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future. That came out in January of this year. And his website is thepriceoftomorrow.com. So I highly want to recommend both of those resources. So welcome back, Jeff. Thank you. Where did we leave off? <laughs> you guys missed the best part when we were oh, talking we were during ta the break. <laughs> yeah, we had a good talk at the break. Okay, so, so you, we were talking about where money's trapped. And you were saying in deflation times, cash will be worth more, <laughs> but assets, real assets will drop about 85 to 90%. Yes. So if you let the natural clearing of, uh, if you let capitalism work today instead of intervened, um, the prices would fall by 85 to 90 percent. So if I have a house, if I have a house of a hundred thousand dollars, that means it drops to twenty thousand. Yes. Yeah. That 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 could that that could happen. And I know people will say there's no way that that could happen. Uh, but but if you just realize that how much money is is stimulating the economy and what what the natural course essentially what nature should have, if innovation I'll go back in a different way if if entrepreneurs are racing in to solve problems for people, right, and they win by creating value, and they lose spectacularly unless they create a lot of value, and those entrepreneurs are using technology to create a lot of value, and that technology is moving everywhere into every industry, the byproduct of that means we should expect prices to be falling along that same exponential path that technology is moving. The only reason it isn't is because we're inflating on the other side through through easing and debt that can never be repaid back. So if you remove the debt, the unwind feeds back on itself, and you have a deflationary depression. And so, or, so, or if you stop adding debt at that rate, you have a deflationary depression, and it would be ugly. It would be ugly for society. Food lines, price collapses, bank collapses. It would look. It would make the 1930s. Um, look like a walk in the park because the problem is so much bigger today. So one of the reasons you talk about the debt and all this, the reason the Fed and the Treasury do not want deflation is because the plan since 1970 has been you borrow money <coughs> and you pay it back with cheaper dollars. Yeah. So, I, so I, I bought, I borrowed a hundred thousand dollars for a hundred thousand dollar house, but then it goes to 300,000. I feel rich and I can pay off the hundred thousand dollars. And that, you pay off the hundred thousand dollars in dollars that are worth less later right, on. So right. it's actually good for debt. And that's why inflation has worked so well since 1971 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. Inflation is just a hidden tax. Right. It's a way for now government the, uh, to go bigger. Now the problem is, is that artificial intelligence 
that's going to take away the idea of what, what you were saying on Mark Moss's show was the idea that technology would create more jobs. You're saying it's not going to happen. It's crazy to think so, right? It is crazy. Now, I, so I, I will debate that with anybody that wants to debate it. But if you, if you understand, if you're at the front edge of this and you understand what's happening, it's, it's impossible to think it could create more, uh, more, more jobs because, because that technology is, and so even the jobs today, people get fooled because they're looking at an independent part of the system and there wouldn't be as many jobs in the market today if you didn't, uh, if you didn't inflate uh, prices like you're, you're doing. So it, what the problem is we're all on most wheels, right? Trying to save enough money so we can retire one day before the crushing inflation takes that money away. And we're trading our time for dollars that are worth less over and over and over again. And we think the job is what's important. I would just, it, this is gonna sound crazy to your listeners, but it is true. What if you could have the exact same or more and, and didn't have to trade your time for that most wheel of a job, right? So what would happen with deflation is you, you would get more for less on an axis that would bring down, uh, bring down prices and you wouldn't need the high paying jobs that are gonna be gone anyways, right? Because you would be, your, your prices would constantly be coming down and that means you wouldn't need to work as much for those things. What you're saying, Jeff, that is the purpose of capitalism was really to build a better product for a better price. Totally, total, that is part of the purpose. So why are we manipulating that? Well, also what you said, is that because people are losing their jobs, they're running to more socialism. That's UBI, Andrew Yang, the, everybody gets a thousand bucks, everybody gets a gold trophy, you know, everybody feels good. There's no more uh, trigger mechanisms out there and we'll all feel good, we'll just keep printing money, which is what caused the problem in the first place. Both sides, crony capitalism or socialism, or, um, or, um, won't, or won't work. When you manipulate a system in a, in a system like this, and when I said it, people are looking at the independence parts of a system, when you manipulate over here, you can expect the rise of socialism. So, and, and if you look throughout history, it's like a clock, a pendulum going back and forth throughout time. And capitalism isn't perfect. Free market capitalism, per, per, you need checks and balances. But, is it, but anything else is consolidation of power to the biggest thug. Because because it, because the, those economies aren't as efficient, and those economies don't produce innovation. So you have to trust that the government can make better decisions in a free market, and that means then that always consolidates into a dictator controlling power, controlling power always. So so by breaking the rules of capitalism and not letting so capitalism requires cleansing. It requires it, it, only economists believe you can grow forever. Right. Um, the uh, capitalism requires you, you grow and you grow too big and then somebody and then the creative destruction breaks that and, and the economy comes down and then it grows, it grows again. The um, stopping that function from resetting means this. So I'll, I'll use an example. To, uh, today, should commercial real estate with what's happening with Zoom and, and uh, should commercial real estate be priced anywhere near where it is today? Right. With like, there's let the fifty percent of the people aren't in the building, so you'd think that at least fifty percent has to it has to fall by that. Why hasn't it fallen? Because we're manipulating those prices higher, and then because we manipulate the, those prices higher, a lot of the entrepreneurs can't do their work through there, so they actually go into technology faster, right? And they reduce labor faster. Because um, and, and so you're speeding up the process of digital disruption, and you're holding, and that, then you have to keep these asset prices higher by printing more money. All the while, the people on the losing side of this, because you're destroying their value in currency, those people rise up and they say, "I can't feed my family, right? I can't pay." And so it's really easy for to to in their minds. I don't agree with socialism but I understand why it's becoming really popular because they don't question what's happening. They just can't feed their families, right? They just can't feed their, and the same thing's happening in housing. If your rents are going up at that rate and your wages aren't going up at that rate, you look for a solution that sounds really good. 
And so I understand both sides of these things. I don't, I can debate both and I can disagree and agree. But the cause of that socialism is by, by not letting a system clear in the first place. Correct. So how, how Jeff, do you see this playing out? What do you think is going to, what, are they what do I do? think is going to happen is, yeah. is, is, what I think is going to happen is, I already talked just before the break of governments won't let it fail, won't, won't on their watch let the whole system collapse. So that means, uh, so they won't, they won't take away stimulus, they'll add stimulus. Um, and you can see it in the stock, the stock market right now without more stimulus, it, it feels like it wants to fall like crazy. About PPP and socialism. Exactly. So you can expect, um, no matter who gets in, uh, who, who wins an election, you can expect much more printing. You can expect interest rates to go to a lot more negative. Um, in the, and I, I know that sounds crazy, but in my book, actually, I pointed to an IMF working paper that said that had actual policy design that interest rates had to go to negative five or six. So if you understand what's happening here, they, mathematically, this is what has to happen. So, so if you're going to save the, pretend to save the system, as you do this, you destroy the, 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 the value of money. Today, that won't turn up in inflation. It, it's short term, it'll turn up in asset price inflation as people flee um, cash and they put it into assets, but it won't turn into inflation and into the real economy until the time that UBI or helicopter money or anything else. And then that's when the print, then essentially you've taken the Fed and the, the treasury has become the Fed, right? And, and politicians are in control of inflation. Once that happens, you can expect a path to hyperinflation. But, and, and now let's go back to, in, in gold, when Robert, you talked about going off the gold standard and, we, and it brought in a period of hyperinflation, right? That hyperinflation ended in, in 1980, 1981, when Volcker, who fed, yeah, went, crushed it by taking rates to, to 27%, and the economy collapsed. He crushed it. He essentially caused a, a, a massive recession. Businesses failed and everything else. This time is different. Number one, the Fed won't have the same power because they'll have granted the power to Treasury, right? And what politician will raise interest rates like that um, in that environment, causing this way bigger bubble to collapse? Additionally, the risk isn't just on businesses anymore. The risk is actually on the treasury itself, on the Fed itself, or it's treasury, the government, because the debt bubble in the government is so much bigger today. And the debt bubble in the Fed, and, and, and the treasury, and Fed has taken that risk off business balance sheet, put it on theirs. So how could they bring up interest rates when it causes the same bubble to collapse? So effectively what all this means is you can expect hyperinflation at some point and that hyperinflation to wipe out everybody until um, until such time that you get to deflation. Think of every country that goes through hyperinflation and what that looks like for their societies. Yeah. So FYI, that hyperinflation followed World War One in Germany, which led to the rise of Hitler in 1933. That's it. I wrote the book, Robert, because it tells all of these things and what's happening next. And you, if you just follow this 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 out, it's it um, it's predicting all of these events and it predicts the next ones. And so, so that's why you know when when I heard you defending yourself, said so I'm not a deflationist. You know, I'm just reporting what's going on here. <laughs> exactly. And, and I was just cracking up is because you're really a technology guy. And you can see what's cu coming from technology where the other guy, people can't see it. Just like Eastman Kodak could not see digital photographs and they didn't want to see it. It, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it just goes so far against their, their, yes, it, because they go, they go, yeah. a lot of people don't want to see what's going on for the same reason today, because what we're talking about is if what Jeff is talking about with artificial intelligence, which is full of the fit, the fed is full of it. But anyway, <laughs> it's gonna wipe Our us out. Definition. It's, it, it's coming anyway, and that's why you know the Rich Dad Company was formed 25 years ago. My first book was if you want to be a rich and happy, don't go to school because you're not gonna learn any of this anyway. And uh, so we're coming down. 
the question is to which I thought I thought was interesting is guys like me. I've been a gold bug since '72, and a, and, a, and a silver bug since '64. And I just recently got involved in Bitcoin, and I agree 100 percent with what you said. The reason prices go up is people are running out of the dollar, and into stocks, real estate, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Yeah. So what's your crystal ball? I mean. You know, gold and silver going up is good for the gold and silver investor, but it's not good for the economy. Mathematically, we are where we are, and it's going to reset in one of those two ways. So, 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 unfortunately, both those ways have massive implications for society. And in, in when you look at this happening throughout history, society breaks up and they revolt and they scream at each other, and 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 there's a whole bunch of fighting right? Typically leading to revolutions and wars. And what countries do in that is they try to blame another country for the pain to consolidate power. So, so expect all of these things to happen as far as a- So China, China, China's our problem today. Yeah. Or, and, 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 and other people think it's a different country, but, but you, you can expect people to manipulate what you think from your pain to, to consolidate power. <laughs> expect that to uh, expect that to happen and just remember it's not bad it, it's it, it typically it's not people it's a system problem so there's a lot of really good people wanting to uh but, but i'm not understanding how the system is, is wired and out of that you mentioned hitler, the rise of hitler is because of the same thing and people are they believe in it's not my fault it's that person's fault that created that and it's easy to believe Right. So that, so I typically look at systems thinking and I think of what is the system that's ca uh, causing this to happen. And if you look at what's happening in the world, you can just, it, it makes sense. Okay. It's a system problem. It's not a, it's not a people problem because that same thing is repeating in every country around the world. Yeah, it's not systemic racism. <laughs> exactly. Ex exactly. That's a, that's a, that's the second order effect of what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, so, so, so. Hey, Jeff, all I want to know is, okay, we, we get down to the brass tacks here. We have hyperinflation. My goal goes up. We have hyperinflation. By the, by the, yeah. By the way, hyperinflation, my goal, my goal goes down? Yeah, um, yes, but, it, but it's, it's essentially what the real value of your, um, uh, your, your currency will go, or your gold will stay that, that valuable. So what it's happens a, to Bitcoin in this whole thing? Buy Bitcoin. And, and the reason I would say... Uh, Amen, brother. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. The reason I'd say own Bitcoin as a store of value, even over gold, I, I mean, it's not gold is a good store of value or historically has been a good store of value. But if you say the market cap of gold, uh, gold is $12 trillion and why it's not because of jewelry, it's because people believe it'll be pegged to currency again. Right. And so, and, and the same, so the camps of gold and Bitcoin are exactly the same. They think you, we need, we, we, but you'd believe, you need to have something underpegging to hold governments responsible. Otherwise, they'll manipulate currencies and hurt a lot of people. Those are the camps of gold and, uh, gold and Bitcoin. So, so why do I think Bitcoin is a better investment? Number one, it's a $170 billion market cap. And if you believe those theses, it's, uh, that it'll back money. Then $170 billion can go up a lot more. <laughs> Than, than the 12 tri uh, trillion. So it, it's an asymmetric bet on that. A whole bunch of other reasons that all, uh, your, your listeners should do their own research. In an environment that's coming, safety is the number one thing and portability of your money, right? And so, and, and in, in past, like if you t take a look at Nazi Germany, people would sew gold into their clothes and a ship would go down and they would sink to the bottom of the ocean because, because of the gold. And, and, and Bitcoin, you can remember 12 words and move anywhere. And so the same thing that's going to, and so you can protect your value and you can move your value. What, what most people don't understand is most of their value is trapped in their local currency and they can't get it out. And, and what about the, I keep hearing about, you know, governments creating their own cryptocurrencies and that's going to wipe out the bitcoins and that's going to wipe out other no crypto. Why not? No, no chance. So they're creating their own digital currencies for more control. 
when I mentioned the IMF working paper, um, to if you realize that it, it, rates need to go to negative six, and people can't, if you couldn't take rates to negative six right now because there would be a bank run, right? And people would take their money out and store it on, under the mattress and the banks would fail because the money would disappear. But if, if you had a digital currency, you can make that in a transaction, right? And so it's more control and that control and each, each government trying to control their own currency is why they need to do it. And also what drives Bitcoin faster because people are, people are in Bitcoin are moving out of that system and they're moving money and, into a system that can't be confiscated from them. And, and that also means governments are going broke. <laughs> they're already broke. Yeah, that, and so that's why I wore this just for you, the California Re Communist Republic. <laughs> yes. but I, I thought you were a Sil Silicon Valley guy. Well, I'm, I'm really glad to say you're not because you have, we have to be, think globally today. But anyway, you know, Jeff, I'd like to invite you on more because it's yeah. been fantastic. It's been reaffirming. And uh, I really thank you for your contribution. Your book is The Price of Tomorrow and I encourage everybody to get it. Thanks very much. This has been fun. Yeah, well, it's no, been thank great. You, thank you for all your we'll information. Get you, we'll get you back on and we'll keep going with this discussion. Yes. Thank you. Welcome back. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and the bad news about money. Once again, I want to thank Jeff Booth and the author of The Price of Tomorrow. We're definitely going to have him back on again because the guy's very intelligent. He agrees with us. Anyway, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on on iTunes, Android, and YouTube. Hurry up because they might not, they might not be in business much longer because the way things are changing. And then you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio anytime on Rich Dad. Uh, our podcasts are archived at richdadradio.com because we're an education company and repetition is how we learn best. So you listen to this program a second and third time, you'll learn even more. It'll just sink in, it'll, you'll absorb it. But more importantly, you can share with friends, family, and business associates because the world is changing so fast right now. It's exactly as Jeff said, there's a, con there's a conflict right now between the government which is the Fed and Treasury and the, and the central banks of the world and artificial intelligence and technology. So simply could summarize what Jeff is saying is that our governments are stuck in the industrial age. And then came 89, which was the information age. And in 2009, we went into the crypto age. So most of our leaders today, like you know, Barack Obama, even Trump, my friend, they're still stuck in the industrial age. And inf artificial intelligence and crypto is going to take off and the world is going to change, like it or not. Yeah, Any it, comments, Kim? Yeah, it reminds me. I mean, I love what he was saying, that they're not paying attention to what's really important. And it reminds me years and years and years ago, and this is a more simplified version of it, but there was a video that we saw called Paradigm Shift by Joel Barker. And basically, Joel Barker was saying, you can't, if you can't see what's coming at you, you're gonna be basically taken down and this paradigm shift is happening and now it's happening at ultra speed, but people don't see it, they can't get out of the way of it and they can't get on board with it because they can't see it. Um, but a big thing is what, what Jeff said is people always assume, well, when a new technology came, it created new jobs. He says, that's, that's no gone. Way. Well, look at, look at, look at you were talking the other day about the, the um, driverless trucks. Yeah. That's 4 million drivers who are gonna be out of work. But that is a ripple effect off of that. Yeah. So what were you saying uh, about- uh, Sarah? Your world, you know, from the MTV side, because Kim and I, I mean, I made fortunes on MTV. Mm -hmm. Well, they're out of business pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> they are now, thanks so to I technology. I in prep for this show, I mean, not in prep for the show, it just so happened, I was watching this documentary on the start of MTV, the rise and fall of MTV, and how MTV killed the radio star. It was the very first video played on MTV was um, that song, and how within like 15 years, MTV had become obsolete because everybody had trans transitioned online and it was much easier to stream your music online, to produce videos and put them out yourself and make money on YouTube. So technology- And, and that's how Justin Bieber became a star. Right. Because well, he was on YouTube, not MTV. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, so to, so, but MTV couldn't keep up. And so then they invented the reality world, the reality TV world. I didn't know this, but th their show Real World was the first reality unscripted format. So they, but they kept in TV. They didn't t keep up with technology. And so essentially 
But and even back to the MTV days, I remember the whole fight of the old tech, the old economy to the new economy. Everybody wanted their royalties, and mm-hmm. those the artists weren't getting paid, and there was this big fight, and their technology is trying to do it a better way and cheaper. Right. So that whole thing blew up, and this is exactly what. Um, what Jeff is saying is happening today. Right. It's the old style, which he called the industrial age to the digital age. I think, too, in the, in the documentary, someone had said, they will never do this. This will never be impossible. And I think when you hear people say that, that means it's guaranteed it will happen. Well, when Napster started stealing all the, down, the yeah, files, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, I just, this is ancient history, but my first date with Kim was to the police concert. And it was our last concert. And there are the mega stars on MTV. I mean, yeah. geez, there were mega stars, but it was a good time. And then they were gone. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yep. And it's called what Schumpeter calls creative destruction. Mm-hmm. And that means that you're here today, you're gone to Maui next week, <laughs> 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 and the jobs are not coming back. And our schools still tell you to go to school to get a job, and that's the problem. Right, right. I so like his wh- example too of the water and the ice. Yeah. Like that makes Days it such change. a, cl- you know, you're in the water. You can't yeah. see the ice coming. Yeah. Or it's like a fish in water. Mm-hmm. What's water? <laughs> but also what happens when, when the, when it, it, it just gets cold, all of a sudden it goes to ice. Mm-hmm. And that's what Jim Rutgers was talking about, ice nine and all this, you know, and he's, he's the guy who wrote the road to ruin and currency wars. He says, they're going to just shut this whole thing down. Well, they already did. It's the same thing Chris Martinson talked about when he talked about the sports arena and you're filling it up drop by drop. Well, all of a sudden it hits a massive point, a critical point, and boom, it's it's changed. Yeah, you can't you can't even see the water and next you time you swim. And mm-hmm. you can't stop it. And you can't stop it. And that's what's happening today. So that's why what Jeff Booth was saying is so crucial. The solution, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you know, it's an old guy with gold and silver. I understand that's pre-industrial age. That's the that's the uh, caveman age. But anyway, and and Bitcoin, I had to switch also. I, I had to get my mind into the crypto age. And when people say, why why are you investing in Bitcoin? It's because I'm an old guy and I better figure out. So Kim and I have always said, like when we're talking about silver, you know, just buy a little silver and your intelligence goes up. Yeah, but you, you have to do attention. something. Yeah, you gotta go get, you gotta get in the game. Yeah, you have to touch it, see it, feel it, get into it, feel some risk. You know, watch it go up and down in front of your eyes and all this, and your intelligence will grow. But I think the biggest message is, this is the, re- this is the reason the Rich Dad Company was created, was for this time. Like I said, my first book was, you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. It became and a best And now there's no school. And now there's no school. <laughs> no school, which is good. But anyway, the point here is this, the people, and Jeff said it, the people that are winning are entrepreneurs. Yeah. You know, all of, when, you, when you look at your iPhone, you know, with all those apps and all that, so that's an entrepreneur behind every room but they're free. And the key to being an entrepreneur is how do you make billions working for free? And that's why my rich dad said to me years and years ago, you know, he says the reason he didn't want to pay me when I was nine years old working for him, he says, if I pay you, you'll think like an employee. If you're going to be rich, you have to think like an entrepreneur. You cannot want a paycheck. So the biggest catastrophe of all in the next few years, 2020 to 2030 are all the old guys like me who are waiting for their paycheck. <laughs> and I don't know what they're going to get. You know, I mean, I don't know if there'll be the money. I think Jeff is saying they'll probably keep printing. Is that yeah, what you heard? That's what I heard. That's what I heard. And at some point it's some point. And, and, and I was l- listening to like the key indicators where, where are the, the key factors he talked about, about if it goes to UBI universal, what is it? Universal basic, basic income, income or MMT. Where everybody gets paid money from the government. When it gets to that point, that's one of the keys for when hyperinflation is going to hit. And he also said about central banks, look at the central bank's policies. What they're doing will dictate whether it's high, whether it's inflation or deflation. And, so, Jeff, and Jeff said it accurately. What happened in tw- uh, September 17, 2019, the Fed and the Treasury took over the repo market and the shadow banking system, and we became a communist country. Yeah. It's because it became a centralized economy. And so they're so desperate right now, Christine Lagarde and Draghi and uh, right, Jay Powell and Bernanke, they're so desperate right now because the ship is sinking. Yep. And so the reason, we, thank you for listening to the Rich Dad radio program, is we don't have answers, but I tell you what, the old answers stop working. Any final words, Kim? No, thank you for listening and uh, go out there and make it a better world as best we can. Yeah, but, you know, we're gonna have some great programs coming up on YouTube if they're still around. 
But anyway, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not threatening. I'm just saying creative destruction. No, Schumpeter says it all. You know, once, once you get too big, they'll take you out. I don't care who you are. So be careful. But entrepreneurship and being financially educated is the wave of the future. So thank you for listening to Rich Dad. Okay, we need we need three shows at least. Yeah, we're gonna be here all day. Oh my goodness, we're just scratching the surface. Well, they had they had you trapped on one program where I think you were one of three or four people, and they didn't let you run. But it's so foreign to the way we think, right? right. Because yeah. we, right. or most people think because they're trapped in this, so they don't see it. It, it. You know, Jeff, twenty-five years ago, I was saying savers are losers. Your house is not an asset. The rich don't work for money. And I got crucified. Right. And then right. Trump and I wrote a book together about why we want you to be rich. And the reason is, is because you're not rich, you're going to be poor. Right. <laughs> it's really, it's really quite simple. <laughs> and then we wrote the book Midas Touch because the way out is being an entrepreneur. Right. That, that, that's it. If you're going to be, a, a, you know, what, what Bucky Fuller calls a brain slave, yeah. working for a wage, you're toast. Right. Toast. You're toast right now. Yeah. So that's what I've been saying. You know, Kim, Kim and I have been married 30 something years and we still discuss money. <laughs> she <laughs> she but, wants to hold but, cash and I'm shifting into gold and silver since I was a kid. You know, I mean, I, I don't trust my government. That's the reason. <laughs> right. But you're so true when you say they're all looking at the wrong thing. They're yeah. all making a big deal about things that really are not that important. Yeah, all the politicians uh, right, right now, and uh, politicians fed everything else, um, but they are completely trapped. They don't have a right right now because they've made the problem so big that now the 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 reset of the system is also so big. And every time you solve a debt problem with more debt, you you, you essentially encode into capitalism the things you don't want most. And and you said I just want the stat because I want to use this. You said that the Global economy is 80 trillion. So, so it was okay. before COVID. It's smaller than that now. And it okay. was 250 trillion of debt. So $80 trillion economy and 250 trillion in debt before people, COVID. Exactly. And people oh. say, oh, it's government personal. You have, because it's like moving a shell game, you mm -hmm. have to understand the entire impact. So, 100, so $185 trillion over the last 20 years produced $46 trillion in economic return in GDP. Four dollars for every one dollar, um, and and by the way, and if you kind of catch what if if technology is moving exponentially, which it is, it's doubling every two years, then that means what has to happen over the, the, the what the amount of debt that has to be created or the amount of easing or or changing the rules uh, has to follow that path to keep an equilibrium. 